edition of AA Computers and Technology. As you can see, I am in my pajamas and today is going to be a really relaxed episode, but I do have something nonetheless really cool to show you guys. It's not computer related. Well, it is computer related, but it's not a computer per se. Um, it's a really cool piece of history. Um, it's something that I think you guys are going to really like. It's something. It's also something I'm not really too knowledgeable about. Um, it's not really in my you know preferred comfort zone of things that I have a lot of um, info on. Um, but I have done some research and I know a little bit um, about the subject already. Of course you guys already know what it is because you read the, co or the um, title of this video. So let's go ahead and pull it out. Da, 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 da. So what is this you ask sitting in front of me? Well it's exactly what it looks like. It is a bag of stuff and I'm going to start pulling stuff out of this bag and you're going to be really um, at least interested um, because in my opinion, you know, for $10 this is definitely a cool find. So the first thing I actually went ahead and pulled out of the bag already, um, this is a Canon T70 camera and you're going to get a closer look at that um, after we take everything out. Along with the T70 we also got a flash module which does work with my Pentax Q. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can demonstrate this and let the capacitor charge. The batteries in this are actually still good, oh prepare to be blinded like uh, Men in Black right now. All right, next, moving on, we have a uh, pretty big lens. This is a uh, telescopic lens, 75 to 200 uh, millimeter focal length. Now, as I said, you camera aficionados, if there's something um, that's just not right in this video, go ahead and post a comment in the comment section because once again, I'm a computer guy. This isn't really in my uh, area of uh, expertise per se, um, so if I made a mistake, go ahead and just throw a comment in the comment section. It's not a big deal. I just really want to show you guys this. I think it's really cool, um, and I'm going to give you guys some close-ups, so if my information is wrong, you can check it out yourself. Next, we have another lens. This is a, uh, uh, what brand is this? Uh, Albinar ADG, 28mm uh, focal length lens right here. And of course, I'm going to throw these on my Pentax Q so you can check them out. I bought the, uh, the uh, Pentax Q lens to the Canon FD adapter right here. This was uh, $20 on Amazon, uh, which was a uh, decent price. For $30, I get three lenses to use with the Pentax Q plus this flash module. And then last but not least, we have a Canon 50 millimeter focal length lens right here with a UV filter attached, right there. And the rest of the stuff in the bag is just some really cool old paperwork. I think I'll take that out and show it to you guys. Um, and then there's the bag itself, which is actually in pretty good condition, as you can see. Um, I think I'm gonna use it with the Pentax Q. I'm gonna put my Q in here along with all the lenses. Um, and use it as a nice little carrying bag because it is um, pretty high quality. It feels really nice. Well, what is the historical significance of this camera? Why is it on the AA Computers and Technology channel? How is it related to technology in general? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. The Canon T70 was one of Canon's first attempts at a computerized camera. It was released in the early 80s um, and is equipped with a 8-bit custom microcomputer with over 1,200 commands. It has 24 kilobytes of ROM and then 128 bytes of RAM built into the camera. This was also one of Canon's last cameras to use the manual focus FD type lenses before they made the switch to EOS automatic focus lenses. So as you just heard, this is actually a pretty cool little piece of technology. And here is a closer look at the Canon T70. This was probably the coolest but also one of the most useless finds in this whole pack. The camera is non-functional, the mechanism which changes the film to the next frame is currently stuck. Now, if I can repair that and get that in working order, this is going to be a really neat little piece um, of history that I'm going to keep around and probably use as a 35mm camera. Um, the only things really wrong with the camera as of now are, as you can see, the battery pack or the battery cover will not stay shut. The plastic around that area is actually missing, so it looks like someone might have dropped this. 
And then also there is some corrosion right here that I'm going to have to clean up if I want to use this again because I don't want that to progress any further. I believe this is where a infrared sensor would go on this camera. I could be wrong, but that's what I read online. So moving to the top of the camera, I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys a quick look around the camera right now. I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to um, completely butcher this video with just loads of wrong information. Um, but you can see a window for a digital output. The shutter button right here. Um, all the other stuff, I'm going to focus the camera so you guys can just look at it. Once again, I'm not a gigantic camera guy. I know a little bit, but I'm not going to show you guys how little I know. You can see the back of the camera right now. Um, the viewport is currently um, black because the mirror is not out. But if I pull this lever right here, we can pull the mirror down. And you can see through the mirror port. Now, if the film wasn't jammed, the shutter would be open and the mirror would be down, um, keeping the reel of film from being exposed. But since it is stuck on one frame, the shutter is currently closed, so it does not accidentally re-expose that section of film. Moving to the side, there's nothing really there. As you can see, um, I mentioned before, it is missing that piece of plastic to hold the battery cover shut. Moving to the bottom, you can see a place for a tripod and then there are two other little buttons right here now let's go ahead and open the film compartment I'm going to ruin the current frame of film but honestly I don't really care um, I'm really curious to see what's in here okay so you can see the roll of film right here this is a roll of 35 millimeter film and there is also an extra roll inside the camera bag now the mechanism right here is the thing that is currently um, crippling this camera this is jammed and I have no idea how to repair it I might have to take the camera apart I might just have to wiggle something in here I have no idea how to fix it right here you can see the shutter which is closed I mean that's really about it so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the film back in here close the camera up and move on And if you're really curious to see what the camera does when you put batteries in it, it just sits here and beeps and blinks. So I'm guessing that's some sort of error message for that. See whenever we click the shutter release, um, all we get is a beep in return. Now unlike the camera, all of these lenses are 100% functional. All they needed was some slight cleaning, that only took a few minutes, and they are ready to go. I've already tested them out on my Pentax Q before I cleaned them, um, so I know they all work. So I'm going to go ahead and throw them on and uh, test them out a little bit. So here is how this is going to work. First I'm going to show you guys the lens mounted to the Pentax Q10, and then after that I'm going to show you all the footage I took using that lens mounted to the Pentax Q.
So that's enough of the lenses. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the contents of this bag, which should be all of this paperwork over here. Um, and I haven't actually gone through all this yet, so a lot of this is going to be new to me. So I'm just going to go along with it as we go through this little stack. But first, uh, we're going to start from the top and work to the bottom. And there's also another stack of paperwork that um, was in a secondary pocket. But this is the biggest stack. The second stack only has like three things in it. So don't worry, we're not going to be here for hours uh, going through this stuff. I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, so this looks like um, some kind of lens cleaning pack. There are little cloths inside here. Um, and then on the back it says when this package is all used up, you can use this coupon um, on any size finish frame in stock. All right. Here is a letter from Seattle Filmworks. I'm going to try not to give away any personal information. I mean, this stuff is 30 years old, so I mean, the information is probably no longer valid anymore. This company probably isn't even open. Um, uh, but it's just a letter from the CEO to the um, cameraman, whoever was using this bag. I don't know if this is a um, real signature or not. I can't really tell. It hasn't bled through the paper, so... Um, I'm assuming that it's not. It looks like it's been written in fountain pen. Um, so if you write in the fountain pen, most most of the time um, it will bleed through the paper. Uh, I cannot really tell though. So I'm not sure if that's personally signed, but that's a letter from Seattle Filmworks addressed to the user of this camera. Um, here is a Tokyo Optics booklet. Just some good old advertising there. Ooh, look, a receipt. Um, the, smire, the Smile Makers for Picture Takers um, is labeled right there. Uh, they bought some sort of accessory, and the subtotal ended up being $73. Hmm, maybe they bought a lens with this. doesn't say what they bought, it just says accessory. Right here, we have a expanded <laughs> service policy, ESP. Um, it's actually stable together. I don't want to tear it apart. Um, Ritz Camera Center's expanded service policy. Uh, gosh, when was this last serviced? Okay, so the expiration date is October 29th, 1997. So the warranty is long gone. Um, oh, here it is. Uh, this camera, according to this, was last serviced on October 29th, 1996. Uh, with a total cost of... Um, what is that? Fifty-four plus fourteen dollars. So, and I'm, I can't tell what they bought. I can't read that handwriting. Uh, Quantary QB six thousand five hundred A with module. I think, I think that's the flash module. Um, I'm assuming that's what it is. All right here, Canon limited warranty card. So we have all this original information that came with the camera, which is pretty cool. Um, deluxe value pack preferred customer coupons. Ooh, I wonder if any of these are still valid. Not. Let's see. Um, automatic diaphragm compact lenses. So this is just the user manual. What is this? Oh, this is just, this is just a uh, chart with the lenses um, and their focal lengths and viewing angles and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go through that. What is this? Oh, Canon speed light. 22 or 277T. Um, I don't think that's the same flash module that came with um, the camera. I think it's a different flash module, but this is just a user's manual. Here is a booklet of uh, what is this? I think this is telling you how to properly maintain the FD lenses. Canon mount lenses, um, just telling you how to mount the FD lenses once again. It's a lot of lens stuff in here. Thank you, number 4021, for choosing snapshots. All right, this guy liked uh, using snapshots. Canon dealer record of Canon purchase. This is really cool to have all this original information with the camera because if the camera, if I can get the camera functioning again, this is pretty valuable to the next owner because they're going to want to see all this. Uh, where it's been, when it's been serviced, that kind of thing. Um, so this is all really neat. Another card, uh, owner record. I mean, you, you don't see old stuff like this coming with paperwork like that anymore, so that's great. Um, 
this is just uh, advertisement for some film, it looks like. Mm, something from Seattle Filmworks again, another receipt, not really sure what he bought there. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, never mind, he bought some, uh, he bought some prints. Uh, something else from Seattle Filmworks. Ooh, what's that? What is that, like, like a popsicle stick? No? I'm not sure what that is. That looks, uh, not gonna mess with it. Uh, more advertisements. More advertisements. Probably from the 80s or early 90s. Another little booklet from Seattle Filmworks. Um, return envelope. Another return envelope. Um, something from Tokyo Optics. Oh, register your Tokyo Optic lenses. Hmm. Should I still do that? I don't know. Another warranty card. This one isn't filled out, though. Uh, helpful hints for using your lens. Um, don't need those. <laughs> I'm trying to speed it up here. Albinar. Oh, this must go with that Albinar lens. Um, limited warranty. Yeah, here it is. A wide-angle lens right there. What is this? It's a box. Oh, lens tissue. There was a lens tissue in here. I haven't found it inside the uh, camera bag, though, so that's long gone. And then a uh, popsicle stick, right? So that's it for the first pile. All right, so here is our much smaller stack that was in the second pocket. Uh, right here, you can see a Canon booklet. Oh, you know what? Actually, it's a foldable. Let's go ahead and unfold that. What exactly is this? Um, warranty system. Okay, so this looks like some some sort of warranty booklet. Lens Wonderland, Canon FD lens guidebook. Oh, this is cool. Hmm. Wow, it's a lot of FD lenses. <laughs> God, imagine if I found that. That would have been pretty cool. We could have taken some uh, pictures of the moon right there. I'm just going to flip through this, take a look at everything in here, because it is kind of neat. Look at that, you have a diagram of how the uh, lens is put together. That's pretty cool. As, as I'm going through this, I'm actually trying to uh, read some of this. All right. Pretty neat. Oh, I thought this was multiple papers, but it's one gigantic pamphlet. Uh, Canon Products Guide. So this is just a product guide to everything they made in the uh, 80s, or around the time period uh, when this camera was made anyway. Look at all those old video cameras. <laughs> And then we have some cameras right here. Those are all Super 8, uh, Super 8 video cameras. And then we have a selection of camera right here. And you can see our uh, Canon T70 is listed right next to um, all the other cameras. All right, so I think that's going to be about it for this video. For $10, this was an absolute steal. I got the three lenses, the Canon T70 camera, the camera bag itself, and then all the other little trinkets that come with the camera bag, like the paperwork, the film, um, all the other little stuff inside there, the UV filter. Um, for So for $10, this was a great find. Uh, really interesting to take a look at all this stuff. It's going to give me a lot more flexibility when making my YouTube videos because now I have three alternate lenses that I can use. Um, so this is just something that's really cool to me, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comments section. Once again, if you saw something wrong in this video, uh, go ahead and leave a comment, and I will post an annotation in the video and try to fix that as soon as possible. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, please do not forget to like this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.